Oh, we're doing an unrecorded hangout right now, and I have some really cool new meteorites, so I figured hit the record button, and we'll put a little segment on YouTube. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, this first one is NWA14492. Wow. Are you kidding That's me? That's impressive. I have to zoom Very out. Nice. Is that ungrouped? It's no, it's the uh, it's a PMG, so Palisite main group, and I think this is one of the larger slices you can get of this meteorite, this Palisite, because there's only five and a quarter uh, kilos total weight. Did you say one four four nine two? Yeah, one four four nine two. It was nine stones totaling five and a quarter kilos. So you do the math, and there's not many slices of this size. That's yeah, pretty limited. Absolutely beautiful, man. Wow, that's gorgeous. Yeah. Very it, nice. How's it going back? The Olivians in there are just incredible. Yeah, it's it's got everything. You can see the the great uh, separation of metals in the etch. Um, mm -hmm. You can see multiple colored mm -hmm. olivines. Mm -hmm. And then I heard someone asking about the backlit, and it is just, it is probably one of the shockingly translucent pieces you'll see. Wow. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. yeah, that's sweet. Nice. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow, that, there's like thumbnail size olive in there, as well as like the really fine ones. That's that's amazing uh, composition. Yeah. I love this, these right here. You know. Yeah. That's really sweet. This piece yeah. is about the size of a thumbnail. Yeah. So someone said that's a keeper. Well, actually, I'm a dealer, not a hoarder. This is for <laughs> this is available. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think I have this priced around the fifteen hundred dollar point, so it's not too extreme for forty five and a half grams. Wow, that's that's a, a awesome about deal, man. Ten percent mm -hmm. of the available mass. That's really good. Yeah. When did Beautiful you get that over? Oh, I just got this um, three days ago. Oh, really? Really nice. It, yeah. Wow. Well, um, a friend at the at the Denver show was trying to raise some funds to make a purchase. So. <laughs> oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. So we were both successful. Now nice. I have I have a few gifts that I want to sh um, share with you as well. All right. So another supporter of the Knowledge Bolide is our friend uh, Shang Chan Yang. And he and I made a little trade with each other. He was, as always, ex extremely generous. But this is oh. Hoi and Shan, I believe. It's a rare iron. It's an IAB-SLH. Oh, nice subtype. And yeah. you guys can discuss what that means among yourself. But I'm going to show you this unique piece. Yeah, so what is SLH? Is it something to do with silicated? Yeah, it has to be silicated uh, something. Oh, wow. No, nah, it's not silicates. It's, it's dealing with the uh, gold content and uh, one of the other contents in there. Let me go pop it back up. I had that in one of the Hangouts one time in one of the 101s. I'll pull it. All right, good. That's neat. Nice and, trade. Yeah, and this is the ugly side. I love this side. This <laughs> is struck. Ba bam. In the ugly side. Mm. Yeah. You always got to show off the the non show the non display side first. But nice what's re <laughs> yeah? Someone actually. This is the the center of a of a ring cut. Someone wanted a ring, and this was uh -huh. the, the center mass that was left. Um, <laughs> if you look at the etch, though. It has these really fine, like cross stitch pattern almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if I'm explaining that correctly, but that's just the way it, appear, it appears to me. I know that Mike can give more information, but um, looking at the chart, it shows anything with the SLHs under the silicate bearing. And then um, the other ones that we usually collect are called fractionated. Yeah, so the one ABs way. can can have silicates in there, but the SLH is its subtype, and it's L for a low gold content, 
uh, and H for high nickel. Mm -hmm. yeah. And why yeah, do you think correct. that IIEs yep. are on there too, Mike? Their IIEs are under silicate bearing. I wonder why so, those are different. The, yeah, the 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 type one ABs and and the the two Es are the two types that will be uh, irons that will have high silicate content in them. But uh, you know the, the silicated one AB irons are are usually the main group irons. So the SLH is talking about uh, gold content either being low, medium, or high, and nickel content being low, medium, or high. <clears throat> so being in different uh, reservoirs that they came from from the one AB grouping. Uh -huh. hmm. Thank you, yeah, the, the 1AVs and the 2Es are referred to primarily as uh, non-magnetic irons. It's kind of an outdated term, but normally that they tended to have formed from a, a mix of different processes, not just simple, you know, fractional crystallization of forming a core, sort of you have impact processing and other, uh, they're, they're sort of different. So that's why uh, they're sort of called that. And the 1A, the 1AVs specifically are a complex and there's all the other subgroups that Mike was talking about. So they're pretty cool. And they're related to Winonites. So another cool thing about them. Hmm. Yeah, they're on the on the sliding scale where they go on that side. Um, th this is a, uh, a very fresh, I love that he puts it on there because it is an mm. R3. So we're talking about just under a gram. So we're going to have to zoom in on this, but take a look at this beauty. Oh, mm. zoom. yeah, there we go. Wow, okay. that's pretty so nice. We got a nice side of crust. crust. Yeah. And of course, I'm showing you the <clears throat> ugly side first. Look at this brecciation. Ah, there. there you go. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Nice. Yeah, that was a really cool R3 with a very dark gray matrix versus the usual kind of brownish tan mm -hmm. you see on all of the R's. Even for a small piece, that's nice and busy. Yeah. I want to look at this under the scope and check that spot out right there. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah, but this was That's just for sale, right? Oh no. The, I, I never <laughs> sell gifts, man. <laughs> gifts or trades like that from a from a friend. Uh that's you know, a supporter of the knowledge bowl. Like yeah. he loves seeing his stuff um displayed and discussed. So mm -hmm. it works out for him as well. Excellent. I mean, I'm winning, but he's he's definitely no. now. Here's the last one. This is a really nice carbonaceous. It's a he's CO3. not kidding, by the way, you guys. He has so many gifts, like it's insane. Yeah, and <laughs> everyone's I so generous. <laughs> I I never give any of those gifts away. I actually have an Oz Backman wing of my house. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so th this is just under two grams of a CO3. Now, all of these are his personal classification, except the uh, iron, obviously. That's an older Chinese. That's really cool. Mm. Oh, that's cool. Oh, nice. Look that at that. Is cool. That is intense for a CO3. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, man, I've never seen one that big. Yeah. That's pretty nice. Looks very unequilibrated. Wow. That'd be pretty uh, under a microscope. Yeah, you can get lost in it because there's so many little chondrules in there. I mean, mm -hmm. e even, well, you can see them here, but live, it's even obviously better. And this this is a really nice piece because it really displays the rock really well. I'd love to see a thin section of that. <laughs> I want to see that under Wait about a week. polarized light. Uh -huh. I think Mike's working on it. Oh, yeah. cool. Right? Yeah, a little crusted exterior. And then we have the natural Ooh. edge. Yeah. So the, oh, the really natural. Nice. Yeah. I love being able to see the chondrules through the natural edge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Thank right. you, Cliff. So, <laughs> thanks, Cliff, for reminding us to hit record. I wanted to show off a little bit of my Mars. <laughs> <laughs> like we like we just traveled back in time a little bit, but this is the new, the classified uh, Martian knock light that I share the main mass holder with uh, Sean and with Mark. So this is a crusted A plus piece and a lot of them were individuals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you That's can nice. tell this, this has multiple sides of crust. So this is not a part of a, 
much larger stone. Yeah. That That's looks, very cool. That looks like half of a pea. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really pretty little one. I, I was eyeballing that one at the, under the life sale. Yeah, that yeah. was really nice. So a lot of these fragments that are crusted like that and in that size, they have secondary fusion crust on them as well. I mean, you could just see it on some of them. I think this one may, I'm not sure. But no, that's just... Wow. Yeah. Look, wow. Look at that crust in this one. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So this is this is the uh, Knocklight NWA one five two hundred, and I wanted to show it with some mm -hmm. sugar right close to it, so you can see the differences of it. So this is NWA one three one eight seven. There's mm -hmm. a one, there's a two gram piece and a 0. 0.6 gram piece, but this is a sugar tight. Oh, yeah, that's obvious. Mm -hmm. You get Man. much larger. Is, the, almost, is that a natural edge, Topher, on the top there? The, yeah. The slice? Okay. Uh, so that, this, that's is, actually, this is a broke. This is a broken or, oh, slice. Okay, so that's, that's what the interior would look like without being sliced. So that's actually a good comparison to the knockalite pieces you were holding earlier because mm -hmm. that's the uh, that's the interior without leveling. Mm -hmm. Very nice, thank you. There must be a lot more total known weight on this one than the knock light, I'm guessing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what the total known weight is on this one, but uh, we've got a little smaller one here too. Mm. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, uh, and there's crust on the edge? Uh, yeah, beautiful mm -hmm. crust right there. Yeah, very, very nice. nice. Yeah. So just for those out there on YouTube land, the uh, the Shergatite, something like this, you're looking about $100 a gram. And on the knock lights, you're looking about five to $700 a gram, depending on the quality of them. But that just speaks to the rarity of the yeah. Shergatite versus the knock light. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it's 1,600 grams total run weight on that one. I love the labels. Yeah, Sue does a great job on all the labels. She she uh, upped the game on on our packaging for sure. Those yeah, labels are beautiful. Yeah, they are too. She nice does an amazing job. job. All right, so we just hit record again because I'm very excited about something. I sent some of my uh, personal collection irons to Mike Kelly to get redone and stabilized, re-etched, and. Mike has one of the ones that I'm super excited about. Uh, I can't wait to get this one back. I'm, Mike, I just saw it for the first time today. And I love it. <laughs> Maybe you can Mike, like it. Here we go. Them. Yeah. Turn it around. Nice. Oh, very oh. nice. Well, let's see. Oh, that's beautiful. Fine video. Fine pattern. Yeah. Which one is that? Taza was my first guess, but there he goes. Mooney Lusta. Yeah. No, this is a rare one. A rare one. Too fine for for Mooney Lusta. What is? I that? actually forget the classification of it. Yeah, this is Turgot. Ah. Is that a Turkish one? Yeah, this is the um, ungrouped of, iron. Of, it's it's yeah. an ungrouped iron out of Yeah, I got Turkey. a small piece of it. Yeah. If I remember the yeah. story correctly, it sat in a, uh, a garden, I do believe, for like a decade. Right. And uh, before it was finally uh, brought to science's uh, attention and formally classified. Wow. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I do remember the so, story off the top of my head. I that's that's noted in the Met Bowl. That's one of the reasons, and it's it's not a well known iron. So no. um, nice. Etch. So so I didn't have any real confidence that it would be stable, and I really wanted if, if I was going to invest in this piece either for myself or for inventory, I really wanted it to be stable. So Mike, what did you do to uh, to this piece so far, and why does it look so beautiful? 
<laughs> so what I did was I ran a quick stabilization on it because it does have that nice natural edge and I didn't want it to end up looking like a whole bunch of the uh, really highly cooked Muniana Lustias uh, where you lose all of that um, and you just have raw still structure just, sticking uh, out to that kind of natural line uh, really define the piece. Uh, so I cooked it low and at a very uh, short time and low current. Um, just to remove, there was uh, kind of an oxidation. Uh, it was already etched, uh, but it was kind of a dark etch and it was a little muddied. Um, mm -hmm. So it was stripped down. It was run through uh, reverse electrolysis, uh, low current, not too long. Uh, and then I uh, heated it up very gently so that you get a better acid etch going uh, by having a more reactive uh, uh, acid. Yeah. Oh, so the the que the question was: Do you heat up the acid or do you heat up the iron? So I I keep both warm. So the the iron you got to heat up the acid when you mix uh, ferric chloride, which is what I used on this uh, with with uh, distilled water to make the acid. It's exothermic to begin with, so it gets warm all on its own. But I, I keep it at a warm temperature because it uh, accelerates the reaction, and you get a I, I find you get a better oh, product. Good excited to get those pieces back and uh i'll have you send me a little bit of video to fill in that segment there but we're gonna stop recording right now so goodbye <laughs>